volunteer at a place that cares for these birds when they get injured or sick. But so, you know, the wildlife rescue places won't care for them because they're not native. Oh, yes. So if something gets injured or sick or baby falls out of a nest, oh, yes. this is they the place. There's one place that specifically oh. cares for these parrots. And oh. I volunteer there. SoCal Parrot. SoCal Parrot. SoCal Parrot. SoCalParrot.org. Yes. It's in Hamul, oh. off of Campo Road, way right towards Mexico. Oh, yes. Courthouse is the place that's considered like the center of the area they like to oh, roost in. Yes. And they, and um, although really it's more the courthouse is the sort of northern edge of it. And oh, they yeah. go farther south oh. and farther east. Oh. Um, so, I've found them two miles from here. Wow. There are about 800 birds in this flock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is they're so getting quiet. And they come. They come from all over the area, and when you when they fly in, you'll see they fly in in pairs oh. because they mate for life. Oh. And during the day, now this is the non-breeding season. Oh. They only do this in the non-breeding season. Oh. Breeding season in the, from spring till fall, yes. starting in mid-February, late February. Um, they are dispersed all over the area, oh. ten miles from here, fifteen oh. miles from here. Nest and they're nesting and raising babies. Oh, I see. Only when breeding season is over, they all convene somewhere here near downtown El Cajon yeah. from this region. There are other areas, like there's a place in, um, like near Ocean Beach, where that population gathers. Oh. But the guys within about a 10 mile radius of here come to somewhere near downtown El Cajon. <laughs> They love these tall pines. That oh. sunset is when you they'll start to gather at the roosting site. Oh, but at yeah. sunset, it's still pretty bright out. Yes. Dusk is when they'll go to sleep, which means once it actually is dark. Oh. Once there's no... Now, it's a little bright. I'm actually a little surprised. Oh, yes. So we yes. might hear them starting up again. Yes. They're Amazon parrots. Amazon parrots yes. from the Amazon. From... Uh, these guys are from Mexico. From Mexico. So not quite the Amazon. So most of them are two species, lilac-crowned Amazon parrots and red-crowned Amazon parrots. Red-crowned Amazon parrots are from the Gulf Coast of Mexico. Oh. They're only a, maybe 3,000 in the wild, and they're losing habitat really fast. Oh. So they're losing ground. They're oh. losing population. In Mexico. In Mexico. Oh. The lilac-crowns are from the Gulf No. um Pacific sea of coast. Cortez, oh, yeah, the yes. Pacific. Oh, um, sea of Cortez. Not quite the coast, but yeah. Yeah. So the Pacific side. Yes. And um, they are also endangered, but not critically endangered. But they are also very few in number. They have like 8,000, something like that, wow. and are also declining. People often will say, well, how did they get here? And people will say, well, the zoo was fixing the aviary and the birds got out. Or somebody, oh. bird, you know, parrot breeder released them. And that's what, no, these birds, when they, anytime they're brought for, when they're brought for um, to be rehabilitated or when dead ones are collected and brought, you know, somebody finds a dead one, they'll bring it to the museum. Mm. All many, many have been, uh, they've had done DNA, you know, look at the DNA, done genetic tests on them. And there are lots and lots and lots of different lineages of these two species, oh. which means that the importation of these birds to here has happened frequently. Oh. And it's, I think it's mostly people coming across the border from Mexico oh. who caught a baby parrot, oh. you know, thought it was going to be a good pet yeah. and it either got out or it, they let yeah. it go because they're not good pets. So the birds didn't fly here on their own no. from Mexico. No, they were brought here. All oh, right. It's just too far as to... Uh, it's a little too far. Yeah. yeah. It's a few hundred. Uh, the closest one, the red crown is I think something like 400 miles. So that's pretty close, oh, yeah. but they won't naturally fly that far. Yeah. They don't migrate. Right. Normally. Oh, right. For them, my, they migrate 10 miles you know, uh, out to go yeah, feed yeah. and then come back to the roof yes, site yeah. or whatever. Oh. And uh, somebody was mentioning parakeets. Uh, uh, yes. So there's something else. There's a bird called a conure. We have those in El Cajon as well. Okay. So conures, they look a lot like these guys. Um, they have more red on their head and they have long tails. Oh. And they're a little bit more, more slender, their bodies. Oh. But not where you sort of have to know what you're looking at. Yes. And those are also called parakeets. Oh. Oh. So oh. they're called, those are the red mitered conure or the red 
based conure. I think they're two different, oh, very yes. closely related species. Like yeah. they might be two subspecies of the same species. Yes. We have both of them. And um, uh, also brought by hand. Yes. Yeah. And those are the ones there. Like, you know, San Francisco is famous for their parrots on t in Telegraph Hill. Have you ever heard of this? Uh, no, I haven't. So not, tell, no. San Francisco has a population of parrots in, in a re an area called Telegraph Hill. Oh. And um, they're that that conure, the uh, red mask conure uh, or the red mitre conure. Uh, um, but we do have them. I I had not seen them in San. So they, got, they have roosted elsewhere. Goodbye, guys. Yes. <laughs> so five o'clock at this intersection, yes. they were e eating. You can see they were eating the um, eucalyptus berries, and they were oh, also yes. eating something in that tree over there. And nice thing about these parrots, like a lot of times when a species shows up in an area and pop, begins to populate it, it's mm. displacing a native species, oh, and it's yes. not a good thing. Oh yeah. The parrots don't eat any native plants. All they eat are introduced plants like the eucalyptus and all the fruit trees that people have, the nut trees like pecan trees. That's what the parrots eat. And these are not important food sources for native birds. At least 50 years. 50, 5 yeah, oh. At least, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Which is why when somebody, next yeah. time somebody tells you, and somebody mentions the parrots and somebody say, oh, I know the story. Yes. San Diego Zoo was repairing an aviary and some uh, of the parrots got out. Yeah. And you could say, no, I talked to a woman who actually knows about that. And also a zoologist. Oh, oh so really? I, I, you? Yeah, I volunteer oh. at the Parrot Center because I'm now retired. Oh. But my degrees are in zoology and this is actually oh, how interesting. within my area of expertise. Yes. Yeah. Not climate change because these birds are not contiguous. With the birds in Mexico, they're they're not. Oh. It's not the same group. Oh, right. They're separated by hundreds of miles. Yes. Right, and they don't move between At a lot them. Of time. Yeah. However, the fact that they're thriving in San Diego oh, yes. is probably a good thing because because of climate change, their habitat is going to shift yes. north. They may find in down over time, San Diego may actually be a more suitable habitat. Uh -huh, from, yes. Plus, they're losing their habitat in Mexico, unfortunately. Yes, the forests which are still means... being destroyed. They won't have trees. a place, right? So the only so here's the only downside. Here's mm. the less than ideal aspect of this. In Mexico, they're on opposite coasts. Ah. Now you put these two species together, oh. and they have no inhibitions against interbreeding because oh. they never interact with each other yes. in nature. Oh. Right. Yeah. So now there's a lot of hybridization. Oh, and is that a bad thing? I, it depends on who you talk to. There are any number of species of birds in particular and plants that regularly hybridize uh -huh. very routinely. Plants uh -huh. in particular. Uh -huh. Oak trees will breed with any other purpose. Oh, live oaks yes. and... Yes, all those, those yes. Yeah. Um, so it's very funny for botanists. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, but there are several Bit species of birds. of illicit sex going on in the oak forest. Exactly. <laughs> They're just like, whatever, sure. Yeah, okay. Oh, oh, <laughs> Come on, what the heck? Keep me warm tonight. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Well, and it's true for birds, too. So all uh, the, I follow the bird, the birding listservs. Yes. And people will say, I saw this bird. They'll show, have, include a photo. They'll say, they put up a, post a photograph. Yeah. I'm having trouble identifying it. Somebody will say, well, that's a Somebody. hybrid Hermit warbler and Townsend's warbler, and that's why you couldn't uh, ID it as either uh, one. Or it's a such and such a teal. It's a blue wing teal and a cinnamon teal. Yeah. Or it's a birds hybridize all the time. Uh, and there are some species where the hybrids are extremely common, like routine. Like uh, the um, there's two. Well, these are subspecies. Two subspecies of flicker, which is a type of woodpecker. Oh yeah, which is called a flicker because it's got. A shaft of red in the back and it flicks when it's landing or something? Yes. You see um, the flash of color. Oh, yes. Right? Yeah. So there are red shafted flickers that flash this sort of coral red. Oh, yeah. And there are yellow shafted flickers uh, that flash this gold. Uh, they interbreed all the time. And they interbreed so often that most of those birds that I have seen, at least when I lived in the San Francisco Bay Area, uh, I would, and I like to take photographs, and yeah. I look at all the photographs, and most of them are hybrids. Oh, it's so, like they've got one red and one yellow feather or something. Or no, or... they have in, intermediate characteristics. Their their uh, feathers will be one color or the other. Uh, they'll yeah. they'll have inherited one of the other traits. Yes. But the markings on the face will be a combination of the markings of the two uh, different species. Gosh. Yeah. Yeah. So that sort of tells me that hybridization is actually natural, and even though these birds do not hybridize in the wild. 
It's not a tragedy that they're hybridizing here. Oh, yeah. All the palm trees oh, yeah. and the eucalyptus trees oh. and the fruit trees oh. that are here, yeah. they are thriving. Oh. And, and we need somebody to be eating the palm, yes. you know, the palm fruits. They're just littering yeah. the ground. Oh,